Hi folks, I'm guessing that you guys are probably also like Lego as a kid, and this brick removal tool is an awesome project video because it covers some pretty good cam and fixturing tips. If you rewind 10 years ago, I first got into machining because the ability to make a part like this blew my mind. I, to this day, think it's absolutely amazing. So let's walk through how we did the cam, toolpaths, and fixturing to make this in two operations. Starting off with a adaptive operation using a three quarter inch end mill on the 770, 8,000 RPMs. We're cooking 4,000 feet per tooth with a relatively light optimal load, about 13% to really remove most of that excess material. If you want to throw a large object at your monitor right now because you hate seeing that center sliver, stick around. We've got a Wednesday widget coming up on adaptive toolpath strategies that get rid of that. Our part is 0.616 inches wide. So if you had some 5 8 inch material, and if you didn't have a piece as tall as we started with, just as a scrap piece laying around, you could improve this operation. After a quick contour to clean that up, we then switched to our Tool 31, our go-to quarter inch end mill, with another 3D adaptive to rough out that inside pocket. And it's worth talking about what 3D adaptive does here. Under the Passes tab, there's two settings worth knowing. Flat area detection is the first one. What flat area detection does is it looks at the area in which the toolpath is doing work. And if it sees a flat area, it ensures that it will finish machine that area subject to any stock to leave. Otherwise, it might actually skip it. We'll come back to this based on your maximum and minimum step downs. There's a new feature that can let us take a really good look at this under inspect, section analysis. We'll click this face and we can literally drag it back and expose kind of the half inside part of our part. This is just a visual. It's not actually changing your part. And now when I hover that adaptive, I can see that blue toolpath is right above the floor of that part. The reason it's above it is again, because we have some stock to leave. If we reduce that axial down to zero, it becomes coplanar and it will actually finish machine that face as you can see right there. The second thing is what do maximum, fine and minimum step downs do. I think a better name for this is really step up. So I duplicated that adaptive. I uncheck flat area detection. That gets rid of the minimum step down. So now we only have two options, maximum roughing step down and the fine step down. I set the fine step down to be effectively equal to the maximum roughing step down. And you can see here, we have three step downs. Obviously not ideal for our part because it would leave huge stair steps, which is where that fine step down comes in. So if we set that to say 0.1 inches, what that's going to do is first machine that maximum roughing step down, in this case at, at the negative 0.5 inches, then it's going to step back up subject to your fine step down to minimize those stair steps. Finally, taking a closer look at flat area detection and the minimum step down, we'll turn it back off and let's look at our toolpath first. Without flat area detection on, it ignores the fact that we have the opportunity to rough out this floor pocket here. So let's look at where those tool paths are doing work. I go to simulate, info. I can click on a point here and I can see that my Z position is negative 0.8 and here it's negative 0.9. So that's a 0.1 inch step down. That's what we would expect based on our fine step down. So if we turn flat area detection on, but let's say we set it to something just below our fine step down value. We can't actually set it to the fine step down value. Fusion will get mad at us because it should be a less. So we'll say 0.09 inches. We don't get a cleanup pass here because the distance between the existing tool path and that floor was less than the 0.9 inches. But if we do this to something say 0.05, so Fusion is going to analyze your geometry subject to the minimum step downs. And if it finds any geometry in that band or range, it's gonna go ahead and finish machine it. So think of this kind of like where you use heights to control where a toolpath does and does not do work. You may not want a tool to waste time cutting a pocket that you'd rather use a different tool to clean up later. And minimum step down is a much easier way to control a toolpath going in or not going in there than say trying to do it with bent machining boundaries. With our roughing out of the way, we can switch over to our 3D surfacing menu option. Now there's some really good toolpaths in here. Steep and shallow is a new one. 
that's through the extensions. Scallop is another favorite, but if you're new to this, focus on mastering parallel for shallow angles and contour for steep angles. Steep and shallow, by the way, effectively combines those two, which is really nice. We just released our Teachables CAM class for folks that aren't able to make it out to Ohio for one of our hands-on classes. So card here for more information and to sign up for that online class. So with Op1 done, hit the pause button and think about how you would fixture it. It's probably one of the coolest things about this world of YouTube and social media and Instagram is seeing how other folks tackle stuff. It's been one of the joys for us of all the different factory tours that we've been able to tackle. Um, but Alex actually took the lead on this project and I think he did a great job. We used the Boss Laser to cut out some very inexpensive pieces of acrylic. You could machine these or you could even use a set of angle blocks if you have them. What that lets us do is use a fixture that we've made that has a single pit bull clamp that can hold this object securely in place as well as locate that geometry to finish this part in two operations, which is pretty cool. When I first looked at this part, my thought was, ooh, I don't see a lot of good flat surfaces. I wonder if we're gonna need a third op. Anytime you're building a fixture that's going to be held at an angle, make sure to think ahead to how you're going to pick up the coordinate system or your X, Y, and Z zero. Here what Alex did was machined in two different planes that are either normal to or perpendicular to the Heimer so that when this fixture is mounted, he can easily and accurately pick up the X, Y, and Z. With that, the rest is pretty easy. Machining is cakewalk compared to work holding. So once you've got that down, it feels really good to make a part like this. And in fact, it's a very similar workflow. The adaptives to rough out the shape, contour to clean up the floor, a parallel to surface that top, doing some detailed adaptive work with the 1 16th end mill, which is one reason where it's helpful to have the 10,000 RPMs. And then finally tracing in the Saunders Machine Works logo. As always folks, hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed. We've got the CAD and CAM files for this available over on the NYC CNC site for pro members. And if you wanna make this project but you don't have access to raw materials, we literally just found Zometry Supplies. They offer small quantities of raw material with free shipping. The piece of material for this was under two dollars. You'd want to pick up a piece for the fixture as well and maybe an extra piece in case you don't nail it on the first try. But nevertheless, really refreshing to see a, a way to get small quantities of raw material at a good price. Take care, folks. See you soon.